Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are continuing our video series on Pythagoras' theorem and trigonometry by introducing trigonometry. In this particular video, you're going to find out what it is. I'm going to introduce the ratios, talk to you about how to set your calculator up properly to get started, and then we'll talk about what's in our next video. This video is aimed at students from grade nine up to grade 12. The word trigonometry is derived from two Greek words, trigonon meaning triangle and metron meaning measure. It is a branch of mathematics that studies the relationships between side lengths in a triangle and their proportions to one another and the angles inside the triangle. Trigonometry, or trig for short, has developed over thousands of years, with its earliest origins around 1900 BC in ancient Babylon and ancient Egypt. It's not surprising with their fascination with pyramids. The ancient Greeks contributed further with the early origins of trigonometry and the unit circle. Hipparchus in 180 BC is known as the father of trigonometry. He used trigonometry in applications of astronomy. Trigonometric principles also developed elsewhere in the ancient world, in India and China. During the Middle and Dark Ages, the Islamic world throughout Spain and Persia continued its study, making major contributions to the study of astronomy and mathematics with the production of tangent and cotangent tables, which were used as early calculators. Trig was used to map and survey much of the known world. It was used to identify Mount Everest in 1913 as the tallest mountain in the world, as part of Britain's great trigonometric survey. Trig has also contributed to other important scientific discoveries, such as the study of electromagnetic waves, which later led to inventions such as microwave ovens, the radio and television. Today, trigonometry is used in a range of careers, from surveying, engineering, architecture and construction, to science and astronomy. Our focus in this video will be on the very basics, setting up a triangle, using our calculator and understanding the very basic ratios developed by the ancients. Now, an important place to start when you're doing some fundamental trigonometry is to be able to label the different parts of your triangle. Now, you would recall from our previous videos that we've been working with 90 degree right angle triangles and you can see in very faint blue there that we've got our right angle represented. Now we also learned about a special side on our triangles called the hypotenuse and that is our side that is opposite our right angle and is the longest side of our triangle. Now we have two remaining shorter sides. In trigonometry these are given special names in relationship to a given or an unknown angle. Now in this particular case I'm going to be using this bottom angle in the bottom right hand corner of my triangle and I'm going to represent that with this symbol that you may not have seen before. It's the symbol theta. It's a Greek letter. Now sometimes that could be represented with other algebraic letters or other symbols from the Greek alphabet. Also, sometimes in different problems with trigonometry, we're actually given the value of that angle theta. It might be 30 degrees or 25 degrees. It's always going to be less than 90 degrees though. Now that particular angle is really critical in setting up the rest of our triangle. We've got that particular angle. When we look out to the side directly opposite that particular angle, we get this side over here. And that side has got a very fancy name. It's called the opposite side. Okay, now that opposite side is always in relationship to the angle that's given or the angle that we're trying to find. That's very important. The remaining side. So I always think when you're labeling a triangle, always start with hypotenuse, then look at your opposite angle, and then whatever is left over, there's only one choice, it's going to be your adjacent side. And adjacent just means next door to. So my next door neighbor is adjacent to my house. Okay, so these are the three key sides of your triangle. Labeling them correctly is the critical part. Now I'm going to introduce to you three different ratios that are used to work with trigonometry and these all relate to the different sides of the triangle in, with respect to that particular angle. You'll notice that this first ratio is called the sine ratio. It's a formula. The sine of that angle theta that was the unknown or the given angle is equal to a ratio or a fraction, the opposite side's length divided by the, op the hypotenuse length. So that's our first trigonometric ratio.
And our second trigonometry ratio is called the cosine ratio. It's equal to the adjacent length divided by the hypotenuse length. And so we're looking at all different combinations here of the three different sides in the triangle. And our third ratio, because there's three sides, is our tangent ratio. And it's equal to the opposite side from that angle divided by the adjacent side. Now, I just want to just stop for a second and just emphasize that these are three really important formulas. Formulas always have two sides. They've got the left-hand side, which is the type of ratio you're using, whether it's sine, cosine, or tangent, and the right-hand side, which has um, got your actual fraction or your ratio. As we discussed earlier, all of the ancients discovered that there were these magic ratios between every side of the triangle and the angles within the triangle. They set up special tables over the hundreds of years, and those tables were often used before calculators existed to calculate these sides. And now that we have calculators, our calculators actually store inside them these ratios. So when we hit the buttons on our calculator, we'll be able to actually work with these different calculations. In our next video, when we do some examples finding sides of triangles, I'm going to show you how to find these ratios on your calculator. Now, there's a really cool way to remember the different formulas. Firstly, if you look at our sine ratio, the first letter from the left-hand side, sine theta, it starts with an S, and then the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction or the ratio is O and H. S-O-H, we've made a little memory tool called SO. And we're going to follow that principle right across. Our second ratio is the cosine ratio. We take the first letter from cosine, C, and we've got A and H. That forms our second part, ka. And then the last one is toa, tangent um, equals opposite over adjacent. If we bring those all together, we have this memory tool called Sokotoa. And you'll hear your teacher talk about Sokotoa nearly every video on trigonometry that I've seen on the internet uses Sokotoa as a memory tool. And that's really important it, to remember what it is. It's not formulas. Sokotoa is a memory tool. So I would say at the beginning of your exam, write it on the front of your exam page, Sokotoa. It'll help you remember your three formulas if they're not provided to you. But remember, Sokotoa is not the formulas. You've actually got to remember using Sokotoa how to write the formula in its full form. Now, each of these ratios recognizes, as we've already mentioned, that there is a special relationship between every angle in our right angle triangle and the sides of the triangle. And that's why it's really important when we're setting up that opposite side that we do it properly. Now, another important thing to remember is when we're using our calculator, we set it up in something called degrees mode. And you can see on this particular calculator that I'm using, a Casio, there's a little D in your viewing window at the top. It's a tiny little D, and it tells you it's in degrees mode. Now, if you have it in a different mode, there's another mode called radians mode. And if it's in radians mode, you've put it there by accident or you've forgotten to switch back, it'll actually give you quite different answers. It's a different type of table using trigonometry. So it's really important for junior trig that we use degrees mode. So if you see that little R in the, in the top of your viewing mode, it's in radians mode and you need to get it out. And the way that we do that is we select our shift button first and then we click the mode setup button and get this particular viewing menu. Simply just choose option three for degrees and then you'll have it ready to use for all your calculations. Well, that's all we have time for in this video. It was meant to be pretty quick. In our next video, we're going to find out how to find sides and angles. We'll look at elevation and depression in upcoming videos and bearings. We'll also move on to non-right angle triangles and trigonometry and unit circle and much, much more as we move into senior work. If you found this video really helpful, why not tell someone, like and subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications button so you'll always know when new videos are coming up. Share this video with your teacher or a friend. Tell us in the comments how helpful the video was. It's always great to get good feedback. And you could also follow us on Facebook and Instagram so you'll always know when new videos are coming up. If you have any particular questions about anything you heard in this video or would like to share something with us, why not do so by direct messenger on Facebook and Instagram or email us at mcclutchymaths at yahoo.com. Well, you've been watching McClutchy Maths. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.